and welcome to the Win Win Evangelism podcast, where we explore meaningful and relevant ways to share the Christian faith with the world. I'm Tina Waltram from Evangelism in Australia, your host and guide on this journey of evangelism and outreach. Every week we dive into practical tips, inspiring stories and thoughtful discussions to help you connect with others and share the message of Jesus in today's ever-changing cultural and technological landscape. Whether you're seasoned in faith sharing or just starting out, this podcast is here to equip and encourage you. There's also a private Facebook group to help you share your faith. Search for the group Everyday Evangelism with Tina Waldrum on Facebook. Welcome along and enjoy this episode. Today I've got another great discussion. I'm talking with Jesse Skelly, who is the National Director of Pays Movement Australia. We're talking about how to reach anyone, anywhere. And we're going to talk through some simple steps, some four steps that will help you reach anyone, anywhere. Welcome to you, Jesse. Thanks, Tina. It's great to be here. First up, I would say I'm a little envious because you're in Tweed Heads on the Gold Coast in Australia and I'm in freezing cold Melbourne. So just putting that out there, I'm a little little envious today. How long have you been the national director up there? Yeah, I've been the national director for the last year, but I grew up around Tweed. So, you know, I call it the promised land. Um, I think those from Victoria often agree when they visit. Um, but yeah, it's much warmer, much more warmer up this way. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell me in a nutshell, what does the movement actually do? What does Pays Movement exist to do? Pays is really passionate about uh, making disciples of anyone, anywhere. And uh, it's got a real heart for schools. And so most people um, don't know a Christian, don't have a relationship with a Christian. So what does it actually look like for us to mentor, get alongside the next generation? And schools are where young people are, right? So young people are in schools, um, whether they want to be or not. Sometimes it feels like a little bit like prison. For them, but how can we go in there and actually make a kingdom difference? Because I think it's something like 85 or 90 percent of people become believers, you know, before the age of 16 and sort of make that sort of formative decision at a really young age. Whereas we often, for whatever reason, we disregard the schools and go, oh, come to my thing over here, come to my youth group, come to my Christian thing over here, rather than actually going to them and building a relationship where they are. Fantastic. And what I love about the movement is, is that thing is that you are about equipping people to go where the people are at. Now, your context is highly driven to, in our language in Australia, into high schools. But today, our interview and these four principles that we want to talk about are applicable for my life just as a, a believer who is not a high schooler and applicable to all age levels. But I love that principle of going to people, not expecting them to come. So let's talk about this amazing template that uh, the founder, in fact, of Pays Movement, Paul Gibbs, has kind of put together. Let's unpack it a bit. I know we don't have time for all of it, but it's such a helpful tool. This first point is the word spread. So what does that mean in in the context of this template? Yeah, so the the sort of four stages are spread, spot, stay, and send. But the first stage is spread. So how how do we spread the message of the kingdom to anyone, anywhere? And often what we do is we decide in advance, you know, who's going to receive the message, so to speak, or how, how do we actually just spread and um, change our box or change our perspective on who might be willing to receive the message? It's so easy to be like, oh, I won't go there, I won't do that there, and we decide in advance on behalf of someone, right? But what does it look like to spread the kingdom message um, in a school, in your workplace, and uh, provide an experience for people to encounter the kingdom of God? Yeah. You know, that's such a great point because we do decide. Yeah. I'm guilty of that, yeah. Jesse. I'm so guilty of that, thinking, oh, they look like or you know, I've known them for a short while. Yeah. Um, but it's really, yes, yeah, starting with that point of being open to everyone. How do you encourage people when you're training them to have that posture? Well, I, I think it's the heart of God, right? You know, God's place is in a street, in a neighborhood, in a workplace, you know, at a school, at a university, wherever we are. And those people around us, like the Lord wants us to get to know and minister to. You know, I'm a soccer player. I'm playing my soccer semifinal tonight, um, hanging out with a bunch of blokes, you know, everyday ordinary Aussies. And God sent me there, you know. It'd be very easy for me to be like, oh, that person's a bit against. I've had a conversation with them before and they're, they're not open to it. But actually going, hey, God's heart is for all these people to come to know Him, for everyone to be saved. 
And so my role, my responsibility is to love them well, to invite them all in one sense, if they're leaning forward to have an encounter or experience of the King. And if they choose to accept that or not, that's not my responsibility. But often we box people and we, so like you said, like we sort of label, oh no, they're not willing or they won't be up for it. Or, oh no, oh nah, I'm reading the Bible with these other boys this week, but nah, he wouldn't want to do that. Rather than being like, hey, just just invite them, give them an experience um, and let them make a decision for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what I do love about these um, steps, this second step of, of spot really helps answer or kind of connects to this spread. So let's talk about spot because this for me is a major, major key for us. What does it mean? Yeah. So it's really spotting people that are leaning forward or the biblical principle, spotting the people of peace. Mm. Someone once told me, um, that evangelism is like shaking the tree. And I love this analogy. It's just like shaking the tree. And some fruit falls straight to the ground, right? People of peace, they're willing. So some fruit doesn't really move at all. It feels really rigid. Some moves a little bit. And our role is just to sort of shake the tree, so to speak, you know? In spreading, we're shaking that tree. And we're trying to find low-hanging fruit. We're trying to find people that are leaning forward, you know? In a school context, trying to find young people that want to have a conversation, want to go deeper. When you're, when you're talking about faith, or you're sharing your testimony, or you're asking them questions, they've got questions about life, you know? They're like, what happens when I die? Uh, one of my mates um, in my soccer team uh, recently lost his partner and he's got three kids. And, you know, like in those moments of crisis and pain, you're often leaning forward. You know, you want to hear wisdom or perspective outside of yourself. And we have that hope that the world doesn't have. And so I think for me, it's, yeah, just trying to discern, hey, who's leaning forward? Who's hungry? What does it look like to spot those ones and then take them on an adventure, so to speak, or actually get alongside them and more intentionally sow into them? I've often learned the hard way, and you've probably done this too, Tina, but it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're sort of fixated on, hey, I'm going to help these three guys. I'm going to disciple these four people. But for whatever reason, you're not getting anywhere and, you know, you're beating your head around the bush rather than who's hungry, who's willing. Hey, if I go, hey, could you do this this week? set some homework or what would it look like if we did this together? And if they're coming back with answers and prepared and they're like, hey, I want to hang out with you. I want to go grab Maccas. They're the ones uh, we often need to spend time investing in, those people of peace. Okay, so this is a brilliant principle and lots of evangelism movements and organisations talk about this, but I really want to hone in on this a little bit more. This finding within our our groups, in your case, in the schools, but for myself, the people in my world, Mm. whether they're through our work or our families, the person of peace that's leaning forward. Now, I know that we talk about if we have a picture of Jesus in the middle of a circle, we talk about the position of people's hearts. Are their hearts towards God Mm. or not towards God? That's a classic missiological understanding. Tell me a little bit about that because that, that's what we're saying, aren't we, really? It's there. Totally. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. I think one of the biggest things we can do as missionaries, as followers of Jesus, as people just trying to love our mates, so to speak, is listen. You know, we've got two ears but one mouth and one of the best ways to work out if someone's leaning forward is to actually listen, to give them the time of day. One of the things I see too many evangelists do is basically have this pre-prepared message, shove it down someone's throat, And then I've done my part. I just don't think Jesus operated that way. Jesus has a heart and wants to show love and care to everyone. And in actually listening and hearing their perspective, you can actually ask good questions. I I think Jesus is really good at asking questions. And so you can ask questions that sort of unlock different things. Just the other night, I'll share a brief story, but we're hanging out in the city of Brisbane uh, with a crew crew up there, uh, Hope Ministries, they're doing a great job. And we're just talking to a guy and he shared from the start, he's anxious, um, worried, fearful. And then he sort of went on a rant, just sat and listened and asked him a question or two that was pretty surface level. And he answered. And then over time, when he sort of got our trust, I went back to what he was struggling with. And I said, hey, you know, what are you, what are you doing about your anxiety? You mentioned you were worried. What have you done to help that? And he just started opening up, right? And he just sort of go, and I, we're then able to share, hey, actually, you know, Jesus can heal that. Jesus came to heal your broken heart and set you free. 
And so he just wrestled on that. And he said, I don't really believe in God. And, you know, he just opened up. It was always to roam and we were able to share the gospel in different ways and sort of chat. And then it was like, hey, would you like prayer? Would you actually like to encounter Jesus? And he did. He, has, he, got, he got caught next week. He's got a lot going on in his world. But he sat and he encountered and experienced the presence of God. And yet we, we might have shared the gospel at the start of the night. You know, there were some other things happening, in, so to speak. But it was by listening and actually being aware of, where he's at on his journey and going, hey, he might not be ready for my preconceived pitch right now, but he might be ready for me to show him love and care, to listen, to ask some questions. And sometimes that's as simple as, you know, getting to know him and realizing he likes footy or, you know, getting to know the person and realizing, hey, they're really passionate about food. That whole all things to all men. I'm just trying to find spaces where, you know, you can sort of sense they're leaning forward, so to speak, or they actually want to engage, they want to get to know you. And hopefully if you've developed enough rapport or respect with that person, you know, you can then start asking not just personal questions, but you can ask, you know, deeper questions. You can ask faith questions. You can ask spiritual questions if they really are seeking and leaning forward. Yeah. So this is what I love about this, finding the people of peace within your circle. Because the alternative to this, Jesse, is They're not a person of peace, but let's call them a a person of war. And they're the people that I feel like I have a conversation with them. They're in my world, but there's this kind of force field there that stops you from having that spiritual conversation. And it's so obvious. We all feel it in our heart. There's a resistance. So that's the person that we're saying not to, let's not pursue those at the moment in in this template that you're giving us that we can reach anyone, anywhere. So it's those people, I guess, like I've got a group that I'm journeying with Jesse and there's quite a few of them that every time I say something about church or Christianity, they want to talk about their experience of Christianity. Is that what we call someone leaning in? Yeah, brilliant. Totally. Totally. I think when when they're receptive, when they actually want to have a conversation, I often find the the sort of misdemeanors, so to speak, are often the people that are like, oh, yeah, I'm an atheist, I'm a staunch, whatever they are. And when you're sort of chatting, it's like they just want to talk about God. They just want to talk about faith. They're kind of like the people that are, no, I'm really against. But then when you have, <laughs> they just, you know, like you said, they just want to talk your ear off and you're like, oh, okay, all right. You, you really do have questions. Right. You really do, you know, you really are leaning forward. Um, you know, what's going on for you? Is there pain? What, you know, what's happened in the past? Like, why are you so supposedly against, but so hungry for answers and so hungry to talk about this? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So this is excellent. So this is spotting the people of peace in our lives. So I'd ask you as you're listening today, who are those people? You know, there's many in your world, but they're not leaning in at this point. But who can you start to get out a piece of paper even now, start to write them down, add them in your phone or whatever? Who are those people of peace? So the the third step, I love love this whole approach. Uh, This third step, the key word is stay, S-T-A-Y. Tell us about that. Yeah. What does it look like to stay and disciple those people of peace? You know, what does it look like actually, you know, to spend time and quality time investing in that person? If they're leaning forward, if they're hungry, so often we spend time and energy investing in those that aren't, like people of war, like you were saying before, or those are just right now in this season aren't aren't active, aren't as engaged. And so um, some, some things I've learned is when people are hungry, when they're leaning forward, it's the perfect time to invest in them and to stay and disciple them. What we often do is we go, oh, great. Oh, you're you're moving forward. Oh, cool. Well, I'll invite you to youth group on Friday or I'll see you at church next Sunday. And then that's a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks away. And then you meet them again, whether they came or not. And it's kind of like, oh yeah, I'm okay. I don't really need prayer. Life's pretty good right now. So it's often when they're leaning forward, when crisis hits or something's going on for them, when you actually really need to stay, you need to get into their world. It's like, hey, let's hang out for coffee. Let's go have Maccas. Hey, me and a few mates are going boxing. Want to join us? Or they're passionate about soccer. Hey, I'll come with you to soccer. Just trying to get in their world Mm. and in those spaces, have conversations. You know, in those spaces, be like, hey, um, we're going to discuss some questions and see what the Bible has to say about that. Would you like to do that? Just inviting or layering their experience and actually trying to help them go deeper. 
and discipling them in different ways that you know that you would normally do. I think one of the things we're really missing in this day and age is actually you know it's so easy to spread so to speak or to spread the gospel, you know, just to mass mass evangelism crusades or to mass sort of seed sowing. But the work of one spotting those people a piece and caring enough for them to journey with them and stay with them is the real work. Like this is the messy work, staying with someone's messy, right? Like discipling, getting alongside, loving someone. It's, it's, it's messy, but it's so, it's so rewarding and we often neglect that work. Yes, and I love that little phrase that you used about layering people's or deepening their your connection with them and their understanding as they discover Jesus. I think about that guy that you were just sharing about in your own um, sporting context and then what – so what can you actually do to – because you don't want to go from they're leaning forward to then, <laughs> oh, I'm going to cram Jesus down there. <laughs> They're right, you know. We want to, mm. l- we want to layer that, and we want them to stay with us. You know, we don't want to then all of a sudden do something to totally get them to lean out. So, what types of things, you know, can can you do? Like even in your situation, yeah, it's good. I think it, part of it is, you know, you, you know that individual, right? We all do. So it's discerning that next step. And so for them, maybe we've had a conversation. Maybe I've had a conversation, let's just call someone Tony. I've had a conversation with Tony the other day and Tony um, has heard my story, my testimony. Um, Tony's got some questions. Tony's sort of on the fence about things like what, what's a good next step for Tony? Maybe a good next step isn't me sharing the whole gospel right now because he just, maybe a good next step is like he's struggling with money. So Tony, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about that. Do you want to have a, you know, do you want to have a conversation around that? And it might not be physically opening the Bible with him and having a deep Bible study, but it might just be coming with a scripture and a thought and there's real three practical steps. Tony, I can, you know, help you get out of debt and do the, like, to me, that's the real work of discipleship, trying to love someone where they're Mm. at and provide some really helpful, basic, simple tools Mm. to help them grow up. And I'm often working with teenagers, young adults, and you feel like you're sort of, you know, wiping people's bums, so to speak, you know, like it's discipleship really is like parenting, right? <laughs> and so just little things like that, um, providing that next step. I, I think the Bible's, you know, the best tool. There's discovery Bible studies. Pages does a thing called a have ream. So how do you study anything with anyone? Um, what does that look like to wrestle with some of life's big questions? But just getting them to a point where, you know, what is their, what is their clear next step? I, I think it's huge. And actually just trying to discern that. So a lot of guys are struggling in addiction, whether that's phone, alcohol, drug. So, hey, actually, how can I journey with you in that addiction? How can I help you be set free? So often we want to pray prayer and Jesus heal them, set them free. And God works that way, praise God. But often the hard, dirty work is walking them through and walking walking in their addiction and actually them choosing to stay free, so to speak. Yeah, that's a great answer. And just asking myself that question, thinking of those people in in my world right now, Jesse, that are leaning in, that are the people of peace, what is the next step for each of those people? I mean, Mm. what a great prayer for me to sit down with Mm. Jesus and say, what is the next step for these people? And then to, you know, be bold enough to take that that step uh, with people. You know, people come to Jesus over time and it's, you know, I think sometimes when we're going for this point in time, pray this now, <laughs> I think it does a disservice to discipleship overall. Agreed. And I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to put people in a box or we're trying to cram people into this sort of, you know, yeah, I just don't think it is helpful in that exact moment. Most people rejected Jesus. Most people turn away. Like, are we okay with that? We, do we really need someone to pray a quick prayer? And like, th- there's so much more. And I think in in being discerning and actually asking the Spirit of God to, hey, like, what's a what's a question I can ask them? You know, and actually discerning, Lord, like, where are they at? Asking them those questions rather than sort of pre-programming and sort of treating people like a number, it makes a difference because that means we actually do love them. We do genuinely care for them. People are searching, man. Like people will go towards rocks. They'll go towards gurus. They'll go towards anything and everything. And the world's doing a much better job at discipling the next generation right now 
than we are. So we actually need to be curious. We need to be in their worlds, in the thick of it, so to speak, and, you know, be willing to get our boots dirty. Yeah, that's so true. And it is, it's hard work, but it's doable work. Yeah, correct. You know, it's doable work. When Jesus said, go and make disciples, we can all do it. We can all be a part of of this. We can all use this template, spread, spotting the people of peace, staying with them, which is, <laughs> Jesse, let's be honest, this is probably the most difficult bit. 100%. Mate, it's difficult, right? Like, yeah, like people are people. I'm, I've got pain. I've got brokenness. Like when you when you really care about people, it hurts because you often get, rejected you often get you know mistreated like you know like there's unforgiveness that can creep in you got to choose to forgive like dealing with others is, is not easy and but it's a it's a beautiful thing that's how that's how we grow and i think you know spiritual maturity or like getting in the gym so to speak as christians if you're not hanging out in the world if you're not hanging out with others that don't know him or are on a journey and you're not discipling them where they're at it's really hard to grow that's a great point of of that staying with people in the process. When you stay with people, they annoy you. Yeah. <laughs> you annoy them. Yeah, I annoy them most of the time. It's true. <laughs> and it's hard because you've got to confront your own mm. areas that you need to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and change exactly what you're saying. Yeah. That's, you know, hey, totally. I'm putting my hand up first. Yeah. I'm like, I'm living yeah. this yeah, it's with true. people. and But we can all do it. Let's talk about send. So the fourth part of this template of how we can reach everyone anywhere is mm, send. Well, yeah. What does that mean? On Pays, we're super um, intentional. I think it's really critical that Christians don't just, um, you know, think of evangelism as this sort of like, hey, it's about a, a salvation message or it's about putting your hand up. But what does it mean for us to come alongside and disciple so they will make disciples? So ultimately, we want to train and equip. We want to raise and release um, our heart as the next generation so they can make disciples of anyone, anywhere. And so we're hoping that we can give them the tools and equip them to go back and to reach those that said no, to reach those that weren't leaning forward or those that weren't people of peace to start with. And and they will, right? You know, I won't be able to reach your friends, Tina. You know, I don't know them. I never will. I won't be able to reach your neighbor, you know, the person you get coffee from every day and the person you buy petrol from, but you will. And so our heart is if we, when we raise and release the next generation to go into those places, that they'd be able to make a kingdom difference where they are. I think one stat that really always like hits home for me is that 98% of Christians say the number one, like the, the main reason that they became a believer was an ongoing relationship with a Christian friend. So just having a Christian friend, just being sent out back into the world to be a Christian friend, to be an ambassador for Christ, like that's the most pivotal reason people actually choose to become Christians because they know another Christian. And so we just want to train them up to be everyday, ordinary Aussies that love Jesus. So how do you, you know, how do you share your faith with your friends? How do you share your testimony? How do you open the Bible with your mates? What does that look like? And what does it look like to disciple young people? What does it look like to disciple your friends? Maybe you're really good at, playing guitar or maybe you're passionate about art like how do you get some people around you that are also passionate about that and how do you start discipling them where they're at so to speak and start doing life with them and getting to know them and spending time together and it's like, oh okay I, I trust this young fella now more I actually yeah I've got to know him he's got my respect so to speak so now I'm going to listen to him because he actually cares about me and um, yeah so we're we're passionate about sending people back into the harvest we know the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few and ultimately for our, our context, for schools, I could be wrong, but maybe in the next three to five years, it'd be very hard to be a Christian in a school-based context. Pays Australia is passionate about public high schools and public primary schools. And so we want to raise up the next generation to go back into school as an army and to, you know, read the Bible with their mates, to pray in their schools, to actually run like love campaigns and, um, you know, just care for your school and serve the school and lay down the life of the school. And I think ultimately it, it makes a huge difference when you see young people having a go and having a crack at that. It's a beautiful witness for the teachers, for their parents, and then for their mates. You know, I, I didn't grow up in a Christian family, but I had that one crazy Christian friend that, you know, just sort of nagged me and his parents were always inviting me to youth group. And those people make a difference, whether we realize it or not, just by being themselves in their school. Mm. Yeah, amen. And what I love about this send, Jesse, is that we don't need any more people 
coming to know Jesus that have a wrong understanding of what it means to then share their faith with others. Like there's so many people not sharing their faith because they think they have to, you know, get out a piece of paper and, and just say four spiritual laws or they have to, you know, within the first three weeks of knowing, people have this wrong concept of sharing their faith. So I love the fact that Pays has this focus on sending, but actually saying to people, you know, be normal. This is how you can naturally share your faith. So the question is for you, the listener today, is how can you do that? How can you actually, the people that you're reaching, the people of peace that you decide to stay with, when they are following Jesus, you've got to give them keys to to be normal, to reach the context that they're in, you know, to do everything that you yourself as a believer have realized, hey, this works and this doesn't work. So yeah, I love that. What would be one or two things that you train people and you say, this is what we want you to do and this is what we don't want you to do? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, it's, it's fascinating you say that, the, the word normal, normal. And I think especially for adults, we've sort of seen, especially if you've been a Christian for a while, you've seen You've seen that person that's sort of like almost abruptly gone in and tried to be like, let's save them. I remember meeting up with my neighbor, um, bless Jenny. I really hope she's doing well. We used to live with her and sit, live next to her in Sydney. And she was an older lady and quite agnostic and angry. We just got to love on her. And I remember meeting up with a local youth pastor and I won't mention more than that, but he basically came over and he met Jenny for the first time and it was like, boom. And then Jenny was nearly like ready to punch on. Like I was like, you know, like she was like, get out of here. And, you know, I had to sort of go in, go in there and sort of clean up that, the mess of that, right? Like he didn't have a respect. He didn't have a rapport. He didn't have a relationship with her. So I think our main thing is how do you build relationships? How do you actually, the gospel spreads through relationships. God's a relational God. How do you just become people's friends? Ultimately, if you've encountered Christ, there's a good chance you've got friends anyway. But how do you actually go on a journey of moving someone from being an acquaintance to a friend? And often that takes time, that takes food, that takes coffee, but you don't need to do anything you're not already doing, right? You're doing coffee on a Monday morning, invite them to come to coffee. You're having a meal two or three times a day, invite them over for a meal, get invited, like go hang out in their world, go hang out with Mac, at Mac is where they're going. Like, so just actually building a relationship with people, I think is so key. And that's, I think how it spreads normally or naturally. I think, yeah, naturally is probably the word I come back to is like the gospel's always going out. The other day, this um, young guy who did pays was talking about um, an AFL team and he now loves the Bombers. And when these new pays guys came to Australia to serve in their mission year, he was sharing the gospel of AFL, right? Jamming it down their throats. And he was in their world. And they, you know, a few people just decided to play AFL and got converted, so to speak. And I think when Jesus has really gripped and changed your heart at this stage, when you're sending them back to their friends, if they've actually made that decision, like it just comes out naturally. It oozes out of you. And I think what often happens is those guys are just like, you know, like when they let loose and when they've given permission to go share and to have a crack with their mates and read the Bible with their friends, it's sort of like God moves, God breathes, you know. He loves a young person, yes, or he loves a person, yes. And if you really encounter Christ, I think often what we do is we go come to these 10 baptism classes or come to this hardcore course. But it's like, just go and share what's currently happening in your heart right now to anyone who wants to listen. Yeah, nothing beats a really authentic believer that, you know, people just, they see, they hear your story, they know that it's real, it's very hard to deny someone's uh, lived experience. So, well, this has been a fascinating discussion. I've absolutely loved this. We've been talking about how to reach anyone anywhere with Jesse Scully, who's the National Direction of Pays Australia. So I will drop in the show notes all the links to paysmovement.com or forward slash Australia after that to, for the specific Australia page, but go check it out. There's I'll also drop the links to the book that Paul Clayton Gibbs wrote on this particular topic, which is amazing if you want to read even more fabulous, fabulous uh, content and something that we can all do and reach the world around us. Jesse, thanks so much much for being with us even though you are on the Gold Coast. <laughs> Thanks Dean for having us. Great combo. Appreciate it. We're here to